Greetings from Strasbourg. We are in the studio of the European Parliament and we will be talking about the vaccinations. My name is Ilza Nagla and um, the vaccination angle we're going to discuss today is uh, that uh, we all are Europeans. We all call ourselves Europeans. Still, uh, in different European countries, the rate of vaccination is very, very different. And therefore, today I'm joined by two MEPs, uh, Veronique Trier-Lenoir, uh, she's an MEP from France and you represent uh, Renew Europe political group. Very welcome. And from Bulgaria we are joined by Petar Vitano and you are from the political group of Progressive Alliance of Social Socialists and Democrats. Welcome. Morning. In Latvia vaccination rates are quite low. We are around 45%. But in, in Bulgaria it's even worse. You are below 20%. So what is the reason why Bulgarians are not so fond of vaccinations? Well, there are a lot of reasons. Uh, I would say there are technical, medical, even political reasons. First, uh, we got very late uh, in diversifying the risks. Uh, the government of Bulgaria bought predominantly uh, AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca vaccines, m over 50%, which was uh, I would say a mistake because they did it because it's cheaper, it's easy to manage uh, and easy to operate. Yeah, we had a similar problem. We relied on AstraZeneca yes. yeah, in Latvia. But the problem is, you know, there, there were cer certain medical problems and even, I would say, political concerning AstraZeneca. So people got frightened, got concerned. And in the beginning of the process, they were hesitant. They were not willing to get vaccinated with Astra. Now, after we had this um, bigger choice, the problems are from from dif different aspects. Political problem is that uh, people in Bulgaria don't trust the government in general. So, because of many reasons, but because they, they feel light on one hand, because the government changed the measures every single day, sometimes with measures contradicting each other, which created the mistrust. And, of course, the lack of choice in the beginning, the lack of a national campaign. We have never had any national campaign. There was no political example how to deal, how important it is to get vaccinated. And people are, and this huge amount of disinformation, like huge amount, fake but news. But coming from where? Coming from many sources, uh, including online sources, including media, including the, the lack of responsibility of the national media, because they were inviting even medical doctors who were talking against the vaccination. So they created a bad environment for the for the population and now the trust of the vaccines is less than 40 percent and that's why the rate is less than 20 percent what is your take i mean also in france in the beginning there was a really reluctancy to to have be, uh, people to to be vaccinated yes, now absolutely. it's getting better what was done correct well first of all hearing my colleague i realize what i know but it's obvious that health is becoming a political issue and Political parties use health uh, questions to uh, campaign and to try to convince the voters. We had a little bit the same kind of problem in France, but at a very low level. And anti-vax and vaccine hesitants are becoming a, a very small minority. But it's really an issue that we probably have to address at the European level. Uh, yes, the situation is improving in France. Uh, the epidemic figures are becoming better and better. As uh, opposite to Bulgaria, we had some kind of use of vaccination campaigns, so we were less uh, um, in difficulty to organize. Health workers are very highly vaccinated, and now the vaccine has become mandatory for health professionals. But there were also protests uh, against the vaccine to be mandatory, right, in France? Absolutely. In the name of human rights, uh, which to me is uh, difficult to understand because human rights begin by the right of your neighbor and it, it does not only concern your own right. But when we look at the sort of all spectrum of the EU countries, the countries where the vaccination rate is the highest are Scandinavian countries. 
And uh, in Latvia, for instance, some say that vaccine, that's not good for my immune system. It's something, you know, strange that I'm, I'm putting in my body. But we all know that uh, Scandinavian countries are very sort of health conscious. They do sports, they eat healthy, they eat bio food. And now you see that the vaccination rate there is the highest. Would you agree that the, the higher the income of the country, the richer the people, the more they accept that vaccination is a good thing? Do you see that it pattern? It is part of the answer, but not only you are very right to notice that Scandinavian countries are uh, educated to uh, public health and to prevention. It is true, for instance, for a vaccine against cancer, which can be offered to young uh, teenagers. And uh, in Scandinavian countries, the level of vaccination is very high. Uh, 80, 90 percent. In France, a thousand country, even if rich, the vaccination rate is very low. It's uh, below 15 percent. So not only is it a question of income, it is also a question of culture and, uh, you are right, of education. And here again, I think that to fight against health inequalities in Europe, we have to uh, take care of education, especially for the young people. What is your take? Why our countries are so different when it comes to vaccination rates? I agree uh, what my colleague mentioned, but just maybe to add something, because I'm a representative of the poorest country. And if you see the mortality rate in Bulgaria, it's, it's the highest. And it's the highest because of many reasons. The same because we are poor, because we don't eat good healthy food, we don't have good healthy system, which means that the political must take a strong decision to make this vaccination mandatory in order to protect human life. Because, like I said, we are the, the uh, people are aging in Bulgaria, and the average age is over the 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 average European age in Bulgaria, I mean. Uh, so we have a lot of bad consequences from the fact that we, we've been living poorly. So uh, to me, the, the decision is uh, obligatory vaccination, at least. But then, like I said, the political party must take the responsibility because I know it's not good for their voters. I know there are a lot of anti-vaccination moods, which are because we are, again, in a pre-electoral pre campaign because we are having parliamentary elections in less than two months, but then the political parties must act responsibly and to uh, impose and to uh, propose measures that would make the vaccination, at least in the health sector, at least in the education sector, at least in the sector of services, mandatory in order to protect and to keep people alive. But what about the third uh, vaccine or the booster vaccine? Uh, in some countries, there's already discussions that, yes, we will do it. But as I understand that uh, European uh, Medicines Agency hasn't, been, uh, hasn't approved that yet, right? Yes. Uh, well, no. Yes, it's so not shall approved we wait, yet. Or shall we wait or shall we start the booster vaccine? Uh, I think it would be better to wait. Uh, and these questions has a link with what my colleague just said, yes. Uh, social issues are directly linked to health issues. And even if I made a remark on vaccination in my rich country, globally speaking, health is related to income. And if we want to improve health and prevention, we have to improve income. To come back to uh, your question, the third dose right now is probably useful for elderly and immunodeprived people but it is not yet approved by EMA and we should wait, one, because it is not validated and two, because there are huge needs elsewhere in the world, particularly in low-income countries and in Africa. And I agree with the alerts of WHO saying, well, look, first send the vaccines uh, to Africa and then vaccinate the, the, the rich countries with a third dose. So, okay for vulnerable people, but we really have to think global. But, for instance, if now the vaccine is for free, the governments are paying for that, so the people don't have to pay. Not all vaccines are for free. For instance, in my country, I would need to pay for the flu vaccine and for some other vaccines for adults. To, 
For how long do you think we will get the COVID vaccine for free? I mean, now the, the booster vaccine uh, will be coming, that will be for free. Uh, maybe next year we will need another booster vaccine, another mm -hmm. one. For how long we can hope that uh, those vaccines will be for free? And if at one point we will need to pay for them, maybe that will encourage people to get them because somehow, sometimes we don't really appreciate things that come for free. What is your take? Honestly, um, in Bulgaria, most of the, at least those uh, vaccines that are mandatory, they are for free. And uh, in advance, we had the opportunity to speak. I don't think that we have vaccines that we need to pay. Of course, uh, if you want to travel abroad to certain countries, yes, you have to pay. I really don't know what is going to happen, but uh, I just want to agree with my colleagues about, uh, uh, about the perception of helping not only our continent, but as well. Uh, as well, global uh, countries with uh, with low income, and it, it is even bad for my country because I have been talking with colleagues from Macedonia, from Georgia. Their vaccination rate is much much higher than a certain, than a European uh, Union country, the member state country like Bulgaria, which is uh, tragic. And something about the measures, maybe, uh, because there are two types of measures. Uh, I see it in different countries, either by motivation or by sanctioning. I think that they both can be used and they are at least what I've been seeing and uh, they, uh, they reach some results. So vaccination, uh, COVID vaccine, uh, should we pay for that at some point in future maybe? Well, first of all, as you know, a vaccine is never for free. <laughs> yes, somebody pays for it. So somebody our government pays for yes. it and in my country it is the government. Uh, so the question is, how long will the governments have an interest to pay for a vaccine rather than pay for the pandemic. Right now, prevention is much higher interesting than you know, having your hospitals booked and so on and so forth. So it's really a question of politics. I think that there will be a long time where it will be better to buy the vaccine rather than have the pandemic. But it's really a question. And to go further, again, I think that building the union of health in Europe should include the continuation of joint procurement, but also go further and try to negotiate all together because this will be the way to avoid business on health which is unbearable and which has to stop for viruses, but also for other diseases, like, for instance, cancer, which is very expensive in terms of treatments. But do you see that European countries are willing to go for this health union? Well, the parliament is uh, pro. Uh, I think that we have to convince the council and the member states that they have an interest a financial interest, a political interest, a social interest. So it will take time. But I think that this crisis has shown that not a country, even rich again, can fight alone. And we are stronger together. Let's stay stronger together in the health issues. But it won't be simple nor quick. But also when we talk about the vaccinations, we see that in, in some countries or also in my country, uh, there are a lot of, not a lot, there are some doctors that are anti-vaxxers. You're a doctor, so what makes your colleagues sometimes to be anti-vaxxers? I have no idea. I'm shocked. Uh, I'm surprised, not that much, because uh, it is... Uh, well, during the last, let's say, decade, there was a tendency among doctors, among nurses. I have no explanation, but again, what I, I am a teacher at the University of Medicine. What we have to do is better convince, better educate, make sure that even doctors and nurses are not hostages of uh, fake news. So it's really a problem. I think it's also a problem of disinformation, misinformation, political involvement in health issues. And again, I think we have to try to fight against it. Do you see that the disinformation is, is really big uh, in Bulgaria? Of course. There was a, I'll give you a simple example. I went outside for a beer with my friends. 
that I got raised with. And we have such a huge arguments about vaccination and they have never been so motivated to fight with me about books. So I noticed that they're the subject of this environment. And there was no medical explanation or neither rational um, explanation that would convince them to accept my thesis. But on your question, what is the reason? There was a saying of a wise man who said that the, the stupid people among the medical doctors and the scholars are the same. I mean, the rate of the stupid people is the same among the scholars and the medical doctors as in any other sphere. So maybe that's the simple explanation. I don't know. So the proportion doesn't change depending exactly. on the profession. Well. Exactly. But then in Bulgaria, we have a, a huge problem with that because uh, not only there are a lot of anti vaxxer moods among the medical uh, doctors, but also the problem with the fake certificates. Because these medical doctors, they issue fake certificates. They spray the vaccine somewhere else and they issue a certificate to the patient, which is a huge, huge problem on one hand, because you are lying the system. On the other hand, you are risking the life of your colleagues, of your friends. And on, thirdly, you are twisting the statistics, because some of these people, they got infected, they got hospitalized, and even they die, which changed the statistic. And then those people who don't believe anything, they say, look, a vaccinated person died in hospital. The vaccine doesn't protect human life, which is a problem. And we have to fight severely. Because that with person the... was not vaccinated, exactly. even though he exactly. or she had the vaccinated exactly. vaccination certificate. So I yeah. also believe that we should set the common measures, because Health Union, this was a proposal of my political party, and especially for poor countries, it is extremely important because the joint procurement uh, are very important for countries like Bulgaria that are small, that don't have enough funds, they don't have enough money, and they will never get such good conditions. But on the other hand, we need to set a common health standards in order to improve our own health systems. But I mean, our countries probably would be, when we talk about this, those common health standards, we would imagine that they would be higher than we have them now. Uh, some, some other countries where the health standards are very high would be worried that if there would be a European sort of attempt to, to sort of uh, put them all health standards on the same level, because for them that would mean uh, lowering health standards. Since the beginning of pandemics, it was proven that the health is probably the biggest issue. I doubt that there would be a government in anywhere in the European Union that would like freely to reduce its health standards, just the opposite, on the contrary. But those who are on the bottom, they need to be helped in order to, to go uh, to, to implement uh, better health standards. We, we, we started talking about those fake uh, vaccination certificates. Is that a problem also in France? We have had that kind of things. Uh, I, I'm not aware of COVID, but I know that there is a mandatory vaccina uh, vaccination for children against muscle in France. Yeah. And we have had fake certificates for muscle in France. And I have seen uh, kids, or let's say teenagers, having muscle, which was never, never seen anymore for, for years. So yes, we also have this kind of problem. And France has an interest for upgrading the level of health in all European countries and in all countries in general. And I do agree with my colleague that the upgrading of health in the European Union will never be a disadvantage for any country. We are together on global health problems and we have to face them globally and in an equal way. That may be one good thing that pandemic brings us, uh, raising the level of our health systems all over Europe. You could say so. I had yesterday the chance to get a very strong vote for a report on health uh, crisis response to COVID and to future pandemics. And this is probably a lesson learned, which is good, but let's avoid the next one. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Thank you. And thank you for watching us. Thank you and bye from Strasbourg.